In July of 2002, Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos was officially released to the public. It controversially changed many things from its predecessor, such as the upkeep system, and more importantly, added the hero system into the game. Why is this at all important to a video game review concerning a game that was released 11 years later? Time to find out. Before I take a deep dive into Warcraft 3, I want to talk a little bit about Dota 2 as a concept, seeing as that's what the video is named after. Dota 2 is a multiplayer online battle arena, or MOBA for short. In a MOBA, the player has to team up with four other players to defeat the other team, which is also composed of five players. This often puts each individual player in conflict not only with the opposing team, but also with the player's own team as a result, especially when playing with other random people. Do you take time and resources away from securing resources for yourself to benefit the whole team, or do you invest everything in yourself to carry your team to victory? If you do take time to do something, how much is too much? What exactly counts as pro team activity? All these things are million dollar questions that have made pro level mobile players a living and then some. For all you non-gamers out there, $40 million is a lot of money. Your average person who plays Dota 2 will have a monitor, a mid-tier PC, and a shitty microphone. With $40 million, you could buy a high-tier PC, many monitors, and two shitty microphones. Each player chooses a distinct hero at the start of the game, and each hero has different abilities and playstyles, along with a unique niche that it fulfills. I'll be going fully into how each hero works in a future video, but to sum up how team composition and hero picking usually works out, I'll just say it like this. There are three main attributes that every hero has. Strength, agility, and intelligence. Each point in strength increases the max HP of a character, each point in agility increases the armor and attack speed of a character, and each point in intelligence increases the maximum mana a character has. Each character is assigned a primary attribute, which means on top of whatever benefit the attribute gives, they also gain damage based on the attribute as well. For example, if you give a level 1 Jakaro a Mystic Staff, which gives 25 intelligence, it will also give you 25 more damage on top of the increased mana capacity. Whereas a level 1 Drow with a Mystic Staff will only have the increased mana capacity, and not the extra damage. Generally speaking, intelligent heroes play more of the support roles since their spells don't scale well as time goes on, and they don't have the health points to take on assaults from enemy heroes without the help of an ally. Agility heroes are the exact opposite. They primarily are near useless in the beginning of the game due to having passive skills that mesh well with the basic attack of each character. But as the game goes on, their more right-click focused builds will allow them to pump out insane amounts of damage. Strength heroes are in a weird area that is closer to agility than intelligence. Many heroes are carries, but only some really earn the title of hard carry. Strength heroes are more like initiators and tanks. They start the fighting and are able to take a beating and live through team fights. If both teams are made up of intelligence and agility heroes, team fights in the first half of the game are basically decided by whoever is not out of position, since both sides are essentially glass cannons that can give punches but not take them. Throw a strength hero into the mix and the defending team may be able to turn it around. Because the hero in question can actually survive for a reasonable amount of time that will allow their teammates to come and help them. In Dota 2, and most MOBAs, generally speaking, the game takes place in three distinct lanes. Basically, the place where people play the game is one great big square, and is usually shown on a mini-map. In Dota 2's case, it's in the lower left. Inside that square, there are three roads that lead to each team's base. Each team has a fountain in the base, which is where players start the match, and subsequently where they respawn when they die. Although there are a ton of professional and amateur teams that play Dota 2, the only constant that the game really acknowledges are Radiant and Dire. The bottom left side of the map is Radiant's territory, where the map is kind of a lush forest teeming with life. Meanwhile, the top right is occupied by Dire's territory, which contrasts with Radiant's land with a dead forest full of twisted trees like some sort of ghost-filled nightland. Once players load into the game, they have one minute before the game starts. Once the game starts, four units for each team will spawn in each lane and will walk down the lane and fight the opposing team's units. These units are referred to as creeps. You may ask, why are these units that help or fight you referred to in such a weird way? The answer is that in Warcraft 3, Blizzard, the company that has developed the Warcraft series since the beginning and up to the current day, defined any non-player created characters as creeps, and so the name just stuck. This explains why the neutral units that appear in camps all along the map are also referred to as neutral creeps. Speaking of, all creeps, both neutral and partial, 
may be killed for gold and experience, or to deny a gold to the enemy team. Most commonly, a player will kill creeps in the lane to receive the lion's share of their net worth per game. A player does not receive money from killing their own creeps, but they do deny their opponents the money they would receive from killing the creep in question. Now you may be asking, what can I do with gold? It essentially boils down to two things. You can buy an item that makes it so you are more likely to get a kill, or you can buy an item that makes it more lucky for you to survive an enemy attack and deny them a kill. And in many cases, items can do both. I'll go fully into each item in a future video, but here's a good example. If you are playing as a ranged character, you can buy a dragon lance to make it so you can hit the enemy from farther away. This is an example of a more likely to get a kill item. Instead of that, you could buy a force staff, which allows you to boost forward every so often, which allows you to escape some sticky situations and get in a better position. Alternatively, you can buy both these items and enjoy both these things, and they will automatically combine into a hurricane pike. Generally, players who support the team and play those intelligence type heroes who are best early in the game will buy items that help them survive enemy attacks first, whereas it is the exact opposite for carry players who pick agility heroes. It is an agility hero's job to get early kills against intelligence heroes, which usually have less HP and are easier to harass and then snowball into an undefeatable force. As an opposing intelligence hero, buying an item that helps you survive helps not only you by keeping you alive, it also helps the team by not having you feed the enemy carry. Each team has the ultimate goal of destroying the enemy team's Ancient, which is a big building that is located in the center of each team's base. Once a team does that, they win the game. It doesn't matter how many kills they get, how much more gold you collected, or how long the game is, once any Ancient is destroyed, the game is over. You might be thinking, why doesn't each team just run to the Ancient then, and just immediately end the game? The answer is that the Ancient isn't the only objective that the opposing teams are looking to destroy or take control of. Looking back to the creeps walking along the line, there are three towers in each lane for each team, which puts the total number of towers in just the lanes to nine. Each team must destroy the enemy's towers, starting from the towers farthest from the Ancient, all the way to the closest. You cannot destroy towers in any other order. An Ancient cannot be injured unless a T3 tower, which is closest to the Ancient in the lane, a set of enemy barracks, and twin towers located near the Ancient are destroyed. Just to be clear, there are two pairs of barracks near each team's T3 towers, and in each pair there is one ranged barracks and one melee barracks. Once a barracks is destroyed, the team that destroyed the barracks will enjoy stronger creeps in that individual lane, depending on what barracks are destroyed. For example, if Dyer's ranged barracks is destroyed top, and Dyer's melee barracks is destroyed mid, the middle melee creeps will be stronger and the top range creeps will be stronger for Radiant. That's a basic overview of the game, and if you're interested, it is available for free on Steam to play. From this moment forward, I will be digging a lot deeper into Dota 2, its origin and history, and each and every aspect of the game, along with its in-game universe. Parts of this will be separated into different videos entirely for both easier consumption and easier production. The universe was not the same without me. To properly address the origins of Dota 2, we must analyze what came directly before it, specifically Warcraft 3. Before the Warcraft brand became the massive online sensation with the release of World of Warcraft, Warcraft was a real-time strategy franchise. What that means is that a player would collect resources on a static map, and using those resources, would produce aggressive units to destroy either other players or the AI. The player's units would often fight the enemy's units, with many skirmishes to simulate a kind of mini-war. The game usually ends when a single player or team destroys all the buildings of an opposing player or team. Where's my Dota 2? I'm getting there. A big problem with the RTS genre as a whole is the sameness of the units. To be clear, I think most players appreciate the fact that if you spend X resources at a certain building, you will get the unit you want to build. However, on a game design level, it is hard to make unique units that are also balanced. As an example, you, a bright-eyed, inexperienced person just got out of a game developer school and decided to make a real-time strategy game where there is one melee unit and one ranged unit. Without even thinking, you give them both the same amount of health and they do the same amount of damage per hit, and you make them both as expensive to produce. You hire people to playtest your game and they give you this feedback. Your melee unit is useless. It turns out that since they both do the same amount of damage and have the same amount of health, the only difference between the two is that you are able to get a few more hits off using a ranged unit versus a melee one. All of your playtesters simply do not build your melee unit 
that you spent your precious time making and instead only build your ranged one. You are then faced with the decision, assuming you do not want to mess with resource costs. Do you make your ranged unit weaker or do you make your melee unit stronger? Warcraft 3 did many unique things to solve this basic issue. They made more than two units and almost all of them were unique in regards to the HP and attack damage. They introduced an armor system that made it so some units took more damage from certain units of a different armor type and took less damage from others. And most importantly, they introduced heroes. Heroes had their own unique type of armor and were unique when compared to other units because you could only have a limited amount of them, three specifically. On top of that, they also were the only units that you could level up. For each kill that you got with your army, if a hero of yours was nearby and alive, your hero would get experience, making it more powerful and thus useful. This incentivized players to kill the neutral creeps located all around the map, a tradition that would continue into Dota 2. Another tradition that would continue for the most part are the number of abilities per hero and the ultimate. Each hero in Warcraft 3 would have access to four unique abilities, but could only learn and upgrade the first three abilities until they reached level 6. At that point, they would be able to learn their ultimate ability. This ability is much more useful than the first three abilities. For example, the Paladin's ultimate can single-handedly turn the tide of battle by bringing a few friendly units back to life. This basic structure has stayed with Dota 2, where each hero has mostly unique abilities and an ultimate that makes him far more useful. To compare, Omni Knight, a Dota 2 hero, has a healing ability similar to the Paladin's. However, Omni Knight's ultimate cannot immediately revive dead teammates, instead it prevents them from taking physical damage for a fixed amount of time. To properly address the origins of Dota 2, we must first talk about Dota. Emphasis on the A. Warcraft 3 had a good amount of pre-made maps, and each map allowed only a certain amount of players or AI to participate in a map. Warcraft 3 was unique in the fact that they had a level editor that allowed individual players to make and share custom maps. Most of these custom maps were just that, a different starting area for the basic real-time strategy game that might have more or less resources to fight over, more shops to buy items, or more neutral creeps to kill for XP. Other maps were more complex. Some had full tower defense games, such as Element Tower Defense. Castle Fight made it so you didn't have to manually produce units at all, instead just pitted two players against each other in a straight line. There were many role-playing games that were very popular, etc. To do research, I went back and played some of these games. Castle Wars was fun and unique, and I'm surprised it has not been adapted into its own game. Broken Alliances was also very fun because you started in three random bases spread across a huge map, and the goal is to kill every other player in the game, with the option of allying with only one. Vampirism by Fire was a really cool game mode that had two players playing as vampires who would hunt eight other human players. And as time went on, both human and vampires would go stronger, kind of like Dead by Daylight. There are countless other maps that are still updated to this day, or at least still played by a reasonable amount of people. However, one of the most popular maps, if not the most popular map, was, and arguably still is, Dota. Now what is Dota? What to rewind to the beginning of the video to find out. Okay, now that you know what Dota 2 is, you basically know what Dota is. The graphics look older, the character models look like they were recycled straight from the Warcraft 3 base game, and there are less heroes, but these games play very much the same. I could just list the numerous differences between the Dota 2 of today, which has been in development for over a decade now, and the Dota of yesterday, but that would be very long-winded. So I'm just going to list the changes in chronological order while I explain everything else that was happening behind the scenes. So basically I'm done talking about the first old game that changed the industry, and instead I'm shifting to talking about the old game mode that can only be played on that old game or its re-released version. The year is 2003 and you're a young man who is known online as Yule. Your real name is actually Kyle Summer, but the general public would not learn that until much later. You enjoy playing Warcraft 3 and you recently played a game mode in Starcraft called Aeon of Strife. Note, Starcraft is also developed by Blizzard and still is to this day. In that game mode, you control a single hero who is tasked with killing enemies spread across three lanes. Wow, where have I heard that one before? This sure is fun killing all these enemies, wouldn't it be fun if you could fight against other players? So after beta testing with some friends over a long period of time, you finally release Defense of the Agents. Dota, for short. 34 heroes, 39 items, and 6 whole item slots. Those were the days. Dota did not refer to each side as Radiant and Dire, but rather Sentinel and Scourge. The year is now 2004. Wow, this map I made is one of the most popular of all time. People actually really like it. I should really create a sequel. I'll call it... Dota 2! Oh my god! He said it! He said it! Thirst for Gamma. And unlike the old original Dota, it'll be way more complex. Three lanes? How about five? Two of those lanes are full of neutral creeps that will not push the main lanes, except for if your team conquers both. Jungling for gold? How about jungling for special orbs? 
and that depending on the color will give you different benefits in the form of unique items. How about being able to hire mercenary creeps to help take objectives? Let's keep this going. Max level, 10. But still have 15 level slots? Giant map that makes traversing the whole thing a chore? Okay, okay. Best I can do is release the game heavily unfinished and have it be forgotten until someone does research for a subspar retrospective on it 20 years later. By late 2004, you all had wanted to go to college and didn't have time to continue updating Dota. On September 23rd, 2004, he posts on a game community web forum declaring that from this point forward, Dota is now open source. Whoever wishes to release a version of Dota made without my consent. I just ask for a nod in the credits to your map. Let it be known that I will not be reviewing Halo in the near future, for obvious reasons. This is the last time that you was relevant to the story of Dota for a while. So you may have disappeared off the face of the earth, but that didn't mean that the development would stop. After all, it's a game mode on a niche video game that everyone can play if they buy a copy. So apparently there were a decent amount of people who tried to expand on Dota after you left. But the only other game mode that is relevant to this story is Dota All-Stars. The year is 2004, still. There were many people who worked on Dota All-Stars, and most of them went under pseudonyms that we would probably never know their real names. But the main people for the purposes of this video do have no names, and are as follows. Gwyn Su, who is also known as Steve Freak, who did a large amount of work polishing the original Dota to make it more enjoyable and consistent. His team would do all the work for a map versions 2.0 to 6.01. Pendragon, also known as Steve Mescon, who would launch the website DotaAllStars.com to help better organize the community. His synonyms include Backstabber and Liar, and Icefrog, also known as Abdul Ismail, who would later lead the development of both Dota and Dota 2. At this point in time, Dota was only getting better as it rises to fame. So what is coming up next is I'm going to give you a quote-unquote quick lowdown on Dota's legacy and the happenings over time in chronological order. The only obstacle is that I am not reading patch notes word for word as that would be boring for both you, the viewer, and me, the writer, slash director, slash video editor, slash sound designer. I care about Dota enough to make a video about it, not enough to list every time a hero's ability does 50 more damage one update and then goes down 50 damage the next. So as a compromise I'll include what I believe is the most important part of the patch notes and just say general bouncing changes. GBC for short, patent pending. That way you, the viewer who has never played either game and probably never will, will remain in the dark since I am not breaking down what each hero does, how they react with each other, and other stuff that would normally entice you to play, as that will be addressed in a future video. And viewers who have played either or both Dotas can be disappointed that I did not go in-depth about any particular patch. Both sides being equally disappointed. A good negotiation if I've ever seen one. Actually, before I go into that, I just want to clarify which characters were present in Yule's original Dota. And even using that term is kind of loaded. These original characters include Crystal Baden, Drow, Lich, Lena, Lion, Razor, Shadow Shaman, Sven, Ventral Spirit, Slardar, Faceless Void, Viper, Venomancer, Doom, Nature's Prophet, Chen, Freaky, Queen of Pain, Skeleton King, Death Prophet, Visage, Magnus, and Nyx Assassin. You may notice that this list is less than the 34 hero number I gave you earlier in the video. The reason is that the other 11 or so heroes have almost nothing in common with the current hero in Dota 2, and thus are not relevant, or the abilities that these heroes have merge into numerous Dota 2 heroes at once, thus not giving them a common ancestor to reference, for lack of a better term. Over the course of the video, you may not see that a hero is added when they are supposedly already in the game, or moved when they were supposedly already removed in an earlier version. I have tried to streamline the explanations as best I can, and individual hero histories will be put into a future video so explanations will be provided in the future. For now, just assume that I am right about everything. February 3rd, 2004. The first version of the Dota All-Star series was Dota All-Stars Beta version 0.95, and it is released by Mayan and Ragnar. Yule creates Dota, but there are many different splintered versions of it. All-Stars was meant to unite them all and include heroes from all the different versions. It's believed that they've been in the project shortly after. After which, Gwyn Su takes the lead. In March 14th, 2004, version 2.0 is released. An early version of Terrible is added and a whole host of neutral creeps are added to the map. Note that there are 8 levels creep camps, which is different from how it is now. Also, general balancing changes. Roughly a week later, on March 20th, 2004, version 2.6 was released. Besides the general balancing changes, new heroes were added, among them being Anti-Mage, 
Chaos Knight, Quinks, Dragon Knight, Luna, Lycan, Omni Knight, Phantom Assassin, Sniper, and two other random heroes that are not important. New game sounds were also added, such as Double Kill when a person gets two kills, Godlike when the player gets a bunch of kills without dying, and Humiliation when a player dies by creeps. Wish they kept that one. Also, it's Morphin Time. Again, Dota was ahead of its time. At this time, there was also some familiar items that were added to the game, such as Reaver, Eagle Song, Mystic Staff, Blink Dagger, and Gemitra Sight. Buybacks were also added to the game. For a person who hasn't played, it basically means if you have a ton of money and you are dead for a certain amount of time, you can pay to instantly come back. Usually it has a cooldown of about 10 minutes, so you can't just buy back every time you die. And it's usually better to save the gold anyway. As well as the ability to random a hero. What randoming a hero means is that the game picks a hero at random and you play it. Additionally, now when the player inevitably abandons the game, the gold is split amongst the teammates. Three days later, on March 23rd, 2004, over the course of a couple days, version 3.0 was released. General balancing changes. Transferring money between teammates was removed. Some items were added to the game, such as Ring of Protection, Weather Tunic, Use Chain Mail, Plate Mail, Holy Armor, and Mithril Armor. An early version of Medusa is added to the game at this time. There's a bug that makes it so sometimes a player cannot control their hero, sometimes permanently. The only fix is to share control of the hero to a teammate and pray it resolves itself. Over the course of the next week, which is the 24th to the 30th, version 3.2 is released, all of its versions from 3.2a to 3.2j. The opposing team would now get gold upon destruction of the enemy's barracks and effigy buildings in each team's base. And besides the general balancing changes, Shadow Shield was removed from the game, and Talisman and Spell Shield is added to the game, as well as Daedalus. Also, the price of the high stat gain items were risen. Version 4.0 was developed April 9th through the 16th, 2004. Roshan was added to the game, and he was described as a giant granite golem. The whole team would get 500 gold for killing him, as well as cheese. Now, when barracks are destroyed, your creeps grow stronger. Item power-ups, also known as runes, spawn near the river on Radiant Side. Double damage runes, haste runes, and invisibility runes, and regeneration runes were added, and the runes used to initially last only 7 seconds. Zeus, Juggernaut, Lifestealer, Bounty Hunter, Naga Siren, Techies, and Leshrac were added to the game. A bunch of old heroes were removed. New items were added, including Aegis, which was craftable and did not bring you back to life, Morbid Mask, Chrysalis, Eye of Skitty, Skullbasher, Heart of Tarask, Ring of Basilius, Mantisile, Mask of Manus, Monkey King Bar, Soul Ring, Yule's Scepter of Divinity, Diffusal Blade, Helm of the Dominator, Battle Fury, and Divine Rapier are all added to the game as items. Used Chainmail was renamed to Chainmail at this time, and the item continues to be named that way to the current day. The Gem of True Sight now drops when a player dies. Creeps are reworked where both sides have equal amount of creeps that are ranged in melee. Previously, Radiant only had two melee. Additionally, gold bounties were reduced for killing creeps overall. The maximum movement speed was increased to 522, where it was previously only 400. This doesn't mean anything to you if you haven't played the game. The fourth level of basic abilities were also added to the game. What this means is that previously you could only upgrade them three times each. This allowed characters to specialize a little bit more in the early game. Players were allowed to vote on whether every player would all random their heroes. April 23rd, 2004, version 4.0 was released. Morphling was added to the game and God was removed. April 30th, 2004, version 5.1 was released. The item Radiance was added to the game. Three old heroes were removed, but Night Soccer, Brewmaster, and Pudge took their places. Metamorphosis was added as an ability for Terrorblade. May 1st, 2004, version 5.2 was released. Really the only thing it addressed was that Metamorphosis took too long to transform, so they fixed it. May 4th to the 11th, 2004, version 5.31 to 5.36 were released. More familiar items were added to the game, such as Satanic, Butterfly, Soul Booster, Scythe of Ice, Shadow Blade, and Town Porter Scroll. Note, Town Porter Scroll made you invulnerable while teleporting so you could not be interrupted. Most importantly, Aconim Scepter was added and allowed you to do 1000 damage to anyone, including teammates. A bunch of items were removed such as Potent Gem and Vampire Potion. Midland shops were removed, and buyback now revived heroes at full HP and mana instead of 50 HP and no mana. May 19th, 2004, version 5.4 was released. The Aegis, still craftable I might add, could bring you back to life every 360 seconds. 
Aghanim's Scepter was reworked to upgrade the ultimate of almost every hero. Refisher Orb was added to the game. An early version of Sonitor was removed from the game, and Troll Warlord was added as a new character. As you may have noticed, some of the dates I have given have not been entirely precise. Moving forward, if I do not give a date for a patch, please assume that the patch is released sometime between when I list the previous date of a patch and the next time I list the date for another patch. Some of this information is lost to time and is the best guess I have. May 27th through July 22nd, 2004. Version 5.5 and all its iterations were released, usually all within a couple of days, with the notable exception of a month period between 5.54 and 5.55. Many of the upgraded ultimates from Aghanim Scepter were removed. Dagon, Black King Bar, Clarity, and Sentry Wards were added as items into the game. The Regeneration Rune now regenerates mana instead of just health. Centaur was added to the game and Flame Ward was removed. Dagon could previously do damage to towers up until this point and that was now fixed. Startup notes were removed. Parts of the Atma weapon were added to the game. This weapon could be received by completing a sort of mini quest where all three parts of the weapon could be found along the map to be combined into an item that grants 560 damage. This patch was mostly about nerfing all the heroes and Gwinsu provided the following explanation for Dota. Quote, None of the abilities, units, or triggers in this map were copied from any other map. The idea for them was copied, but all the programming was redone by me. Not as if copy-pasting would even work. The terrain was not done by me, however. To reiterate, abilities, units, and triggers in this map were all written by me, but the idea behind many of them come from other maps. Thus, it's called Dota All-Stars. Some heroes and many abilities aren't from other maps. This is for several reasons. First, many abilities on All-Star heroes from other maps wouldn't fit into this map, usually being too weak. Some I changed for fun reasons. I also added heroes at whim to keep the map changing and infused with new material, making it more fun and introduced more creativity. Version 5.6 was released on July 27th through the 28th, 2004 and did not add much. It removed the Atma weapons and added periodic weather events such as snow or rain. Version 5.61 was added through September 2nd through the 4th, 2004 and was mostly rebalancing. Personally, the most notable thing about this update was that Refresher Orb no longer had three charges and had its cooldown increased to four minutes. Version 5.62 through 5.68 were mostly released between September 18th through the 25th, 2004. Again, general bouncing changes. Other than that, Lone Druid, Dream Protector, Rider, and Broodmother were added to the game at this point. An early version of Silencer and Pugna were also re-added to the game. Broodmother was the cause of perhaps the fastest patch to come up, at least so far. Early September 19th, 2004, Broodmother's Spawn's Firewing ability was patched, and her incapacitating bite was nerfed. Two hours later, patch 5.64 was ruled out, which fixed a bug that allowed Broodmother's spin web buff to last permanently. Version 5.71 through 5.74 were released between October 4th through the 11th, 2004. Headdress was added at this time, as well as Tidehunter, and in turn, Rider was removed. Roshan was given an ability that reflected melee damage, about 15% of damage dealt. Some tournament organizing was advertised in-game, scheduled for October 25th. Version 5.73 was skipped due to a fake version being released, which advertised for a Warcraft 3 deprotecting software. The sick version also added two new heroes, Assassin Lord and Warlock. Version 5.75 through 5.76 were released October 14th through the 21st, 2004. Bane, Ursa, Keeper of the Light, Necrophos, Ogre Magi, Sen King, and Tinker were added to the game. Pudge was also re-added to the game. Additionally, October 14th, 2004 is when Pendragon launches the website DotaAllStars.com. The necessity behind the website was due to how Warcraft 3 maps were spread out to people. Back then, you would need to know a friend who has the most recent version of Dota, and then you would need to start a manual lobby or join one that is the exact same version. Dota All Stars allowed people to download the most up-to-date version for free. In the years that followed, the site turned from a small forum with only 30,000 users to a massive community with over a million visitors every month a million page views every day, and a staff of over 100 volunteers. Eventually, ideas for heroes were proposed by members of the community. Some of the hero ideas, like Huskar and Dazzle, were eventually added to the game. Needless to say, the website was an important pillar of the Dota community, and nothing bad ever happened to it. Version 5.77 through 5.78 were released between October 22nd and 23rd, 2004. Observer words were added to the game at this time. Version 5.79 was released on October 31st, mostly GBC. The most notable thing from this update was that Pugna's old ability, which passively drained mana of nearby enemies, was replaced with Nether Ward. Version 5.8 through 5.83 was released between November 4th through the 7th, 2004. 
Most notably, Pudge was restricted from buying Blink Dagger. Version 5.84 and 5.84b were launched November 16, 2004. Mirror Match and Deathmatch game modes were added to the game. Dragon Knight's Dragon's Greed ability was replaced with Dragon's Blood in 5.84. Four hours later, 5.84b patched the new Dragon's Blood ability, granting 100 times the health regeneration than was intended. Despite the bugs, this version is considered by many to be the first competitive season of Dota. November 20th, 2004, IGS starts the first official week of Dota All-Stars. This would be the last thing of note that happened for Dota in the year 2004. Gwensu publicly announces that he is leaving the Dota team around February 28th, 2005. Sometime later into 2005, Gwensu is approached by leaders of what would become Riot Games, and he starts working with them to develop what is later known as League of Legends. For the people who do not know, League of Legends is a Pepsi to Dota 2's Coke, but at this point in the video, there's no reason to get into that can of worms. A developer who worked along with Gwensu, Nykus, takes the lead at developing Dota after Gwensu's departure. Ice Frog and Pendragon work alongside him. Here is a short self-description of what Nykus did for Dota. Quote, The role I played in Dota's development was as a bridge between Gwensu and Ice Frog. Essentially what had happened was Gwensu had withdrawn from much effort on the map, having started a colossal upgrade but then having lost interest in the meantime. After a period of this where it was obvious the map was dying without updates or attention, I forcibly took over the project from Gwensu. Version 6.0 through 6.01 were released March 1st through the 5th, 2005. Earthshaker, Shadowfiend, Axe, Enigma, Tiny, Enchantress, Weaver, Phantom Lancer, Bloodseeker, Razzle, Gambler, and God of Wind were all added as heroes. Previous items that were removed were re-added, including Town Portal Scroll, Fine Pirate Potion, Staff of Negation, and Cheese. New items were also added, including Hand of Midas, Lincoln Sphere, Blade Mail, Mechanism, Necronomicon, Tango, Sanjay, Yasha, and Sanjay and Yasha. This was the first time that the map was fully reworked. The fountains were added to the game and would attack enemy heroes trying to enter the other team's base. Both Observer and Sentry Wards were now stackable. The Town Portal Scroll no longer made you invulnerable to damage. The announcement First Blood was added to the game. The announcement Combo War was sadly removed from the game. Version 6.02 through 6.03b were released March 18th through the 22nd, 2005. Mega Creeps were added to the game and would be granted once every barracks on a team were destroyed. A global message was added to inform every player when Mega Creeps were granted. The Courier was added to the game as a chicken that could move items to the player, and Rezzle and God of Wind were removed. Both Tinker and Shadowfiend were restricted from buying Manta Style. Pudge's hook up until this point used to be curved, now it moves in a straight line. Here is a quote that I believe speaks for development at the time. Mechanism. We're sorry we didn't get to this quite yet. We don't quite know what to do at the moment. Possibly removal because using nulls in the recipe is always going to make it a really smooth item. Fury Swipes. Fiddled with some things but haven't quite figured out what Blizz did. Techie's Ultimate. We had it done but something really weird glitched at the last second. We'll figure it out for the next version. Satanic. We'll be getting to this as well. Might host a poll on what to do. Omni Knight. I recognize this guy as a weapon of mass destruction. Just didn't do anything about it this time around. Keeper of the Light, Razzle, and God of Wind are also in need of some addressing, but again, didn't quite get to them as I personally hate all three. Due to time constraints, we didn't get around to fixing some bugs like Mana Week, Roshan Toss, Gambler plus Roshan, and the animation glitches with Bane Pudge. Rest assured, they will be fixed. Version 6.04 was released March 27th, 2005. The Ancients now had True Sight and would no longer attack heroes. Bloodseeker and Chan were removed. Tinker was now able to buy and use Manta Style, however previously summoned illusions were now destroyed. Tinker was now restricted from buying Necronomicon. Version 6.04b was released April 4th, 2005. This included some minor bug fixes and was mostly just GBC. Most notably, Gambler could not insta-kill Laundruid's Bear anymore. Version 6.05 was released April 13th, 2005. Mostly GBC, but Maelstrom was also added to the game at this time. Version 6.06 was released April 21st, 2005. And again, GBC. Enigma's Alliance was changed from Scorch to Sentinel, and Faceless Void was banned from buying Refresher Orb. Version 6.07 was released May 4th, 2005. Spearbreaker and Bristleback were added to the game, and Gambor was removed. To prevent people from running enemy towers all by themselves, invisible towers were added that would slow a hero's attack speed when no creeps were nearby. Version 6.08 was released May 8th, 2005. Just GBC. That's it. Version 6.09 was released May 26, 2005, and again, mainly just GBC, but there was unreleased content in the form of an armor rune. Shame that never made it into the game. Sometime in June, Nike steps down and Ice Frog officially takes the reins of Dota. Version 6.09 was released June 24, 2005, again, just GBC. Version 6.10 was released July 9, 2005, and again, 
JBC. Actually, wait, Invoker was added to the game. The death timer was made more accurate and various typos were fixed. Version 6.11 through 6.17 have no release date that I was able to find, which although it was not ideal, it was mainly just GBC anyway. Invoker can no longer refresh cooldowns for abilities by invoking with the same Qualus Wex or Exhort. Meteor was also nerfed. Also, I believe Invoker and Techies were added to a special tavern that basically meant they were not in the game anymore. A developer note tells it all. Just because a hero has moved to this tavern doesn't mean in any way that he won't make it back. It is mostly temporary. Most new heroes will also make a stop there for a version before coming to main to help map stability. Invoker, a hero with 27 abilities, should have been placed in this type of tavern to begin with. He isn't moved here due to balance, it's due to potential bugs, as with any hero with 27 abilities may have. After a version or so, he will be restored. Don't worry. Techies, he was not moved here because he was imbalanced. He wasn't. He was also not moved due to noobs crying like some of you put it. Most of the people who had a say in him being removed were highly skilled recognized players in the community. He was moved instead of removed completely because there are still techies lovers. I would consider a NF mode that some of you suggested for a future version. Clinks, I don't think he was or is too strong. Here's another quote that was made in 6.12b. I've decided to restore techies, not because I don't think the reasons for his issues are valid, but because I think the concept of that tavern for a hero like techies is flawed. He was in Dota for a very long time. If someone has an idea to make him a better overall hero, suggest it, but I won't outright remove him from normal play. I'd rather get a better solution for him, and I intend to in the near future. The new Hero Tavern, new, will be used mainly for future heroes as a buffer location, which will further improve map stability. I do not want to see posts complaining about anything until you guys actually try the new changes in a few games, as they are more or less all for the better. I will be implementing a strict balance forum system in the near future to help filter between noobs complaining and real issues. After seeing this, my only reaction is who is the current Ice Frog, and what did he do with the real one? Version 6.13, GBC. Also, Tiny's Avalanche cooldown was increased by 2. Version 6.15. Rune color is now changed based on the type of rune. Version 6.16. Literally just GBC. Version 6.16b. Fix the Earthshaker's Fissure to work properly. Version 6.17. Hero lore descriptions were added for Shadowfiend, Magnus, Morphling, Tiny, Viper, Shadow Shaman, Luna, Doom, and Sand King. These descriptions were added by random members of the community. Version 6.18b was released September 30th, 2005. Originally, it was supposed to be labeled version 6.19, but it was pushed out early to address much needed bug fixes. Specifically, both types of wards, as well as certain types of techies mines, could block creeps. The real version 6.18 was released October 1st, 2005. Roshan will now return to his spawn whenever he attacks a team structure. Also, Invoker was removed. Versions 6.20 through 6.22 were released sometime around November 4th, 2005. Abaddon was added to the game, and couriers could no longer collide with entities, just like wards and the techies' minds previously did. I could just say GBC, but overall, long disables and area of effect disables were nerfed across the board. Version 6.23 fixed a bug that would sometimes cause abilities to just stop working for the rest of the game. Version 6.24 made it so Toss no longer did damage to towers. Version 6.25 walked it back and made it so Toss did do damage to towers, but just not as much as it did before. Version 6.26 fixed a refresher orb plus minus plus rearm exploit, and also Viper's Corpse of Skin now gives slight magic damage reduction. Version 6.27 was released December 1st, 2005. Nether Swap now destroys trees around area of both the player being swapped and the player doing the swapping. This was mostly done to prevent cheesy plays. Version 6.27b fixed Berserker's Call affecting shackled units. Version 6.28 added Witch Doctor and Spectre into the game. Nether Swap was also fixed again to prevent swapping into inaccessible areas of the map. We are now finished with Dota for 2005. At some point in early 2006, Mark DeForest, the founder of a company called S2 Games, contacted Icefrog Online. DeForest was a fan of Dota All-Stars and eventually convinced Icefrog to join S2 as a designer. While there, Icefrog mainly worked on a game called Heroes of New Earth. Initially, Icefrog's employment agreement gave him all intellectual property rights, created a connection with Heroes of New Earth, but was later revised to grant S2 those rights. Icefrog also agreed from the get-go to continually update Dota All-Stars and its associated websites so as to maintain the current player base. Moving back to the Dota development side. Before version 6.29, Axis Berserker's call was abused to kill Roshan easier. This was now fixed. Version 6.29b fixed Bane being able to use Brainsap on ally heroes. Version 6.30 was released April 12th, 2006. Beastmaster, Jakairo, and Outworld Devourer were added to the game. Mirror Mode was also added back into the game. Silencer's last word no longer worked against Flint Dagger or Black King Bar. Version 6.30b fixed lag issues that had to do with Jakairo and Mac users. 
Version 6.31 made it so Sniper's headshot would not affect allied unit. Aghanim Scepter was also made available for any hero to buy, but there were still only some heroes who actually had an Aghanim Scepter enhancement. Version 6.32 made it so Chain Frost could not bounce off of an enemy Witch Doctor's Death Ward. Also, Weaver's little bug creatures no longer die when the Weaver dies. Version 6.33 made it so Mechanism was fixed to only have one in effect at a time. Basically, the health regeneration effect no longer stacked if multiple teammates bought a Mechanism. Version 6.33b fixed a bug that allowed Pudge to buy a Wink Dagger. Version 6.34 removed Stout Shield from the Aegis recipe. Version 6.35 made it so Boots Travel and Town Portal Scroll now share a cooldown. Version 6.36 was released August 24, 2006. Warlock and Alchemist were added to the game. Version 6.36b reduced the max gold that Grievous Greed ability can stack up to. Version 6.37 made it so Medusa's Purge now does 600 damage to summon units instead of just insta-killing them. September 6, 2006. Riot Games is officially founded and starts working on League of Legends in earnest. Version 6.38 was released October 27, 2006. Murano was added to the game. Seed creeps now spawn every 6 waves. Also, bottled runes now give a full bottle instead of an empty one after use. Also, Rashawn still drops cheese. Version 6.38b was GBC. These were all the major events that happened in 2006. At least for Dota. Version 6.39 was released January 2nd, 2007. Meepo and the real Dazzle were added to the game. Doom got an Aghanims and upgraded Dire Creeps now become bigger just like the Radiant Creeps do. Version 6.39b allowed heroes to be swapped in the random draft game mode. Version 6.40 made it so Entangle was removed from Lone Druid Spirit Bearer from levels 3 through 4. Version 6.41 added text that was previously removed stating that Boots' of speed buff does not stack. Also GBC. Version 6.42 was released March 2007. Hood of Defiance, Bloodstone, and Assault Curious were added to the game. Lumber was finally removed as a resource in the game, and only mid-game mode was added to the game, where all towers are invulnerable and creeps do not spawn. Aegis was finally non-craftable and became a Roshan-only drop. Roshan now gets stronger over time, every 10 minutes specifically. Version 6.43 made it so the Death Armor was more accurate, it was off by a second or two previously. Version 6.43b fixed a rare bug that caused heroes to not revive. Version 6.44 was released June 3rd, 2007. Darkseer, Underlord, Undying, Storm Spirit, Templar Assassin, and Huskar were added to the game. You now have to be below 25% health to start being denied by teammates. There is now a kill message when a chicken courier dies. Version 6.44b made it so that when you kill a courier's illusion, there is no longer a kill message for it. Version 6.45 made it so Town Portal Scrolls can now target their respective agents. Version 6.46 made it so Suicide Squad attack no longer destroyed wards. Version 6.46b made it so no Talisman was a little cheaper, from 175 to 150 gold. You can tell when I'm really trying to find something interesting about a patch. Version 6.47 was released August 24, 2007. Puck was added as a hero via winning a hero to model contest. Version 6.48 made it so Centaur's double edge only did magic damage to himself rather than pure damage. Version 6.49 was released October 26, 2007. Javelin, Armored of Mordigan, Orchid Malevolent, and Shiva's Guard were added to the game. Lysteewer also got a rework. Several backstories were also added for some heroes. Version 6.49b made it so Fisher worked properly for Earthshaker's Aftershock, and fixed the bug relating to Ogre Magi. That is all that happened in Dota News for 2007. Version 6.50 was released February 6, 2008. Yule Scepter, Gwinsu, Scythe of Ice, and Orchid Malevolent were all redesigned. Four new creep camps were introduced. Invoker was reworked to resemble the Invoker he is today, meaning he only has 10 spells, not 27. Version 6.51 made it so Ricky Smokes Rain now interrupts teleports. Again. Version 6.52 had a host of major changes. Items are now muted unless carried by its owner and may only be pulled by entering a command to pull resources. Worst of all, players of different languages were allowed to more seamlessly play with one another in game. A tragedy. Version 6.52b made it so Creed Creeps do a little more damage once the enemy's barracks are destroyed, and also reduced the armor of barracks in favor of more health regeneration. Version 6.53 was released July 10th, 2008. This version marks the first official, simultaneous, multilingual release. Also, Clockwork is added to the game. Several backstories are also added for some heroes. Version 6.54 reworked both Invoker and Dazzle, although more emphasis was put on the rework for Dazzle. And here's where the fun begins. September 2008, Pendragon starts working for Riot Games as Director of Community Relations. 
The great backstabber Steve Pendragon Miscon makes his move that will cement his position as betrayer of the Dota community because shortly after starting his job with Riot, he puts out the following message. The website, Dota All Stars, will be offline for the next week or so while the database is moved to its new permanent home where its contents will remain archived and available to the public for the sake of historical preservation. In the meantime, I hope some of you will join me and over 3 million other players for a game of League of Legends. It's free! The website also pushed an ad that directly advertised League of Legends, and it was later found out that Ben Dragon sold the website to Blizzard. Last thing, a couple people who used the forum claimed that their hero ideas were used almost directly and added to League of Legends, with different names and no credit. Not verified, and not illegal if true, but still shitty if true. October 7th, 2008, League of Legends is announced to the public. Version 6.55 was released October 7th, 2008. Windrunner and Kunkka were added to the game. The Glyph of Fortification was also introduced, but at this point it was a consumable item that could be purchased every 6 minutes and could not be put into an inventory. Dust of Appearance, Phase Boots, and Magic Stick were also added to the game. Coddle was reworked. Version 6.56 made it so X marks the spot no longer works if a hero becomes spell immune. Also, terrain and minimap spots are now revealed at the start of the game to make it easier for new players. Version 6.57 made it so the Courier now costs 200 gold. That wraps up the year of 2008 for Dota. Version 6.58 was released January 11th, 2009. Blade Mail was reworked. Skullbasher was reworked. Storm Spirit and Undying were also reworked. GPC. Version 6.59. You can no longer attack items that are not yours in the fountain area. Enigma was also reworked. I'm getting lots of emails asking me what point x9 and TC are. Every 9 versions, there's a hidden side quest in the map. TC is the Torn Chieftain hero model. March 19th, 2009. Pendragon, staying classy as usual with some contributions by Gwen Su, writes a small article labeled Dota All-Stars Postmortem. Pendragon makes the following claims as to why Dota All-Stars worked and why it could be better. For why Dota works, diversity of content, focus on PvP, a strong community, the Warcraft 3 engine and tools, and small development and testing teams are all attributed to the success of Dota All-Stars. At the same time, Pendragon believes that the Warcraft 3 engine and tools, as well as the small development and testing teams, are a double-edged sword, creating limitations that limited Dota's potential. Pendragon also believes that difficult installation of Dota, high barrier to entry, and high variable game lengths were all reasons why Dota was not an optimal experience. I won't disagree with all the points he made, but still he's a backstabber and an extra one at that. March 15th, 2009. Pendragon and Ice Frog have a falling out. Dota All-Stars is no longer the place to be, and Play Dota is the new place to be, according to Ice Frog. To be fair to both Pendragon and Icefrog, Icefrog does not keep Play Dota up forever either, and I believe the site is shut down sometime in 2019. Version 6.60 was released June 9th, 2009. Batrider and Elder Titan were added to the game. Ghost Scepter, Coiling Blade, Talisman of Vision, Force Staff, Pipe of Insight, and Poor Man Shield were also added as items to the game. Yule Scepter can now be self-targeted. Captain's Draft game mode was also added at this time. The hero that would eventually become Razor was also reworked to more resemble him. Version 6.60b was released June 13th, 2009. It fixed the fatal error that would sometimes occur when two people with Blade Veil manually attacked each other. Version 6.6.1 was released July 7th, 2009. Bottles now refill at a fountain if they are not fully used. Sensor's intelligence seal is now tied to last word rather than his Glaives of Wisdom ability. Version 6.61c and 6.62 fully rewrote the map architecture to be more updated version and essentially took them a whole month of August, 2009. Version 6.63 and 6.63b were released September 16th, 2009. Neek's Assassin's Mana Burn was changed to scale until they came better, and Weaver's Geminate Attack now works on towers. Bloodstone was tweaked so that it was more punishing to die with one, but more rewarding to live with one. Mjolnir now increases attack speed instead of adding additional agility, and Eaglehorn was removed from the recipe entirely. A puck exploit was also patched. It is now October 2009. Ice Rock is approached by Valve and agrees to remake Dota in the Source Engine. Here is his blog post. I have some really awesome news I'd like to share with you guys. I am now leading a team at Valve. I finally have all the resources needed to do some very exciting stuff that you guys will love. I look forward to revealing more specific details when the time is right. My goal and top priority in the future is to solve the surrounding issues that affect the Dota experience in order to allow it to reach new heights. Addressing these issues will enable us to further enjoy aspects of Dota such as gameplay, mechanics, and in-game feel that currently work well and ought to be maintained. As I've said many times in the past and especially after today's developments, I'm very excited about Dota's future. With regard to the 6.64 patch, the focus will be primarily on more balance improvements. It is moving along very smoothly and I expect to have it ready soon. Once those refinements are done, I'll be working on some fun new content such as heroes or remakes for the 6.65 version. If there are specific things, big or small, you want me to consider for patches that fall, let me know. Version 6.64 was released October 13th, 2009. 
Flesh Sheep no longer gains charges from creeps, and Broodmother's spin web has a minimap icon. The in-game scoreboard was improved to include respawn time, hero ultimate cooldown, and hero levels. October 27th, 2009, League of Legends is now fully released in North America. Version 6.65 was released December 23rd, 2009. Slark and Ancient Apparition were added to the game. Alchemist's unstable concoction was changed to resemble its current edition. That was Dota for the year of 2009. Version 6.66 was released January 13th, 2010. Fittingly, Doom is reworked. Earthshaker's Echo Slam no longer counts corpses as an entity to amplify damage as much. Divine Rapier can no longer be destroyed by attack clicking the item. Version 6.66b was released January 26, 2010. Doom was nerfed and the rules for Divine Rapier were slightly altered. Version 6.67 was released March 24, 2010. Ethereal Blade and Soul Ring were added to the game. A Capture Point game mode was also added to the game. Weaver's Urn of Swarm was replaced with the current The Swarm. May 12, 2010, Heroes of New Earth was released, and unlike Dota 2 or League of Legends, there was an initial price tag to play the game, which they eventually get rid of a year later. It must be noted that many of the characters' abilities were very similar to that of Dota and Dota 2. Also, spoiler alert, Heroes of New Earth would shut down 12 years later in June of 2022, same month I started my channel. Coincidence? I think not. Version 6.68 was released July 26, 2010. Shadow Demon, Io, Gyrocopter, and Disruptor were added to the game. Arcane Boots and Orbs of Venom were added to the game as well. The gold system was overhauled. Version 6.69 was released October 11, 2010. Enchantress got an Aghanim Scepter upgrade, and Aghanim Scepter now required all three tribute items instead of just two of them. And a new loading screen was also added for Dota. Also, sometime in October 2010, Dota 2 was officially announced. Version 6.70 marks an important moment where I can almost finally stop talking about the original Dota and start talking about the new one. Updates from Dota start to later be added to Dota 2, a game that isn't even out yet. October 13th, 2010, a blog post is made claiming that Ice Frog lied to Valve about previous employment and generally that he's just a bad person to work with and a control freak. At the time, the information was seen in two ways. First, proof that Ice Frog was not a good person and game designer, and that Yu and Gwen Su were the ones who made the game what it is today, and not the person who has been developing it for five years after they stopped contributing to Dota at all. This would mean that an upcoming game of non-significant importance to this video would be released in a bad state, since Ice Rock presumably is a sellout who has no idea what he is doing. The second view was that this was all made up nonsense that was speculative at best, and libel at worst. Ice Frog and Valve can do no wrong. Looking back, this article is very interesting. Firstly, they got the name for Ice Frog right before any information that would verify Ice Frog's identity was made publicly available. There are three sources of information that I will be revealing in future videos to show why I think the name is correct. However, these sources only emerged in 2012, 2014, and 2022, which are years after the blog post was made. This leads me to believe that the author did have inside information, but does not necessarily mean he or she is a Valve employee. Secondly, they cited information that is mostly correct about Ice Frog's employment history. The only thing that is not verified is the Ice Frog attempting to interview for a job with Riot Games but there likely would not be any documentation for that kind of thing anyway. Version 6.70 was released December 24th, 2010. Tusk and Phoenix are added to the game, as well as Smoke of Deceit, Medallion of Courage, and Drum of Endurance. That marks the end of all Dota and Dota 2 related news for 2010. Version 6.71 was released January 23rd, 2011. Allies are now notified when you buy Smoke of Deceit, and Gems of True Sight now have a 6 minute timer between when you can buy another one. Version 6.72 was released April 27th, 2011. Rubik is added to the game, and Veil Discord is also added to the game as an item. Version 6.72b was released May 4th, 2011. Essence Shift no longer steals primary tributes permanently. Version 6.72c was released June 2nd, 2011. Broodmother was nerfed to move slower both in and out of her webs, and her broodlings do less damage to buildings and more damage to heroes. Version 6.72d was released July 17th, 2011. Lone Druid Spirit can no longer TP back to Lone Druid after taking damage from an enemy hero within 3 seconds. The first trailer for Dota 2 is released August 15th, 2011. September 9th, 2011. Dota 2 enters into open beta. So at this point in this video, I could have done the lazy thing and just ended it, but this is probably going to be split into parts anyway, and I might as well finish Dota off since the story ends pretty soon after. And some interesting tidbits happen after the dimension makes its way into Dota 2. Version 6.73 was released December 24th, 2011. Skywrath Mage, Ember Spirit, Timber Saw, and Legion Commander were added to the game as heroes. Rod of Atos, Heaven Selbird, Tranquil Boots, Ring of Aqua, and Abyssal Blade were also added as items at this time. And that's the year for Dota in 2011. 
Version 6.74 was released March 9, 2012. The flying courier's cost was increased and the courier's killing gold bonus now only applies when no couriers are currently dead. Version 6.75 was released December 29, 2012. Arc Warden and Winter Wyvern were added to the game. Shadow Amulet was also added to the game at this time. Version 6.76 released October 20, 2012. Meepo's Agonims now gives 100% stat sharing. Version 6.77 was released December 14, 2012. Bounty Hunter's ult no longer reduces armor, and Centaur Warrunner's double edge no longer interrupts channeling abilities. Centaur's ult no longer stuns, also. That was all that happened for Dota in 2012. Version 6.78 was released May 30th, 2013. Earth Spirit and Oracle are added to the game. Backdoor Protection now also reduces incoming damage by 25%. Version 6.79 was released November 24th, 2013. When Aegis expires unused, it heals the hero fully over 5 seconds. Evasion now stacks diminishingly. When buying back, 25% of the remaining respawn time will be added to your next death. Buyback now prevents from gaining unreliable gold. Pudge is allowed to use Blink Dagger. Finally, version 6.80 was released March 1st, 2014. You now lose 1 gold per second if you haven't picked a hero after the selection timer runs out in all pick. And that concludes the story of the original Dota, or at least for the purposes of this video. Dota is still played to this day in Warcraft 3, and the highest version I've been able to find is a version 6.86. Due to the popular fan following of Warcraft 3 Dota in Russia, a developer named Dracolich has been releasing unofficial updates to Dota All-Stars since it was officially discontinued in 2015. As of 2019, Dota All-Stars 6.89A7 is the newest version available. So to sum everything up in a neat bow, the origins of Dota 2 start in Warcraft 3. There, the inspirations for the hero system are clear, as well as leveling and creeps. Warcraft 3 empowered players to create their own minigames using the map system, which allowed Yule, with inspiration from a StarCraft game mode Aeon of Strife, to create the first Dota. Yule releases Dota in early 2003 and sticks with it for about a year. He then leaves and says anyone can do Dota as long as they give him proper credit. Before Yule leaves, there are roughly 32 heroes. From early 2004 to February 2005, Gwintsu takes the lead, and under his reign, the number of heroes double to around 64. Neutral Creeps are added, Roshan is added, and Aghanim Scepter are also added. Some heroes from the Yule era are removed and have stayed gone to this day. Many of the advanced items were introduced at this time during Gwinsu's reign. From February 2005 to June 2005, Nykus takes the lead. Nykus adds 10 heroes that would stay all the way up into Dota 2. Some of them are the most iconic. He also adds a decent amount of items that have stayed, such as Hand of Midas, Courier, Blade Mail, and Lincoln Sphere. Mega Creeps and Fountains were also added during his tenure. Since June 2005, Ice Frog has been the lead developer of Dota and subsequently Dota 2. By the end of Dota, there are 110 heroes total, which means that Ice Frog added roughly 36 heroes before quote unquote finishing with Dota. Basically, everything that Ice Frog worked on for Dota was added to Dota 2, including items and heroes. He started to not update the original Dota as frequently following 2012 and would stop entirely by early 2014. This video has basically been Dota 2 from its conception to when it became a Windows-only open beta in September 2011. The next part I plan on covering is between September 2011 to when the Reborn launcher was released in 2015. I plan on going more in depth about the tournaments and the ongoings on what happened around that time, at least a lot more when compared to this video. I mentioned Dota 2's competitors, like Heroes of New Earth and League of Legends, not only to dunk on them, but also to show they all came from the same place. And despite the bad blood, there's a lot of overlap and camaraderie between the communities. And you can't talk about who developed the first Dota without mentioning the people who would go on to develop League of Legends. This has been the longest video I've ever made, but even more than that, it has been the second video I've ever made. So far, this seems to be the driest of the Dota 2 videos, which might sound ironic given all the extra drama. After all, I had to go over 200 pages of patch notes, and the next video should not even be half of that. I did not play the original Dota when it came out, but I did play Dota 2 back in 2012 or 2013. So hopefully, me being involved will make me have better insights about the developments that happened during that time. I did play a single game of Dota in preparation of this video, and I was Techies, and I won. Techies was perfectly balanced. Ice Frog, why did you change him?